Okay, there we go. Okay, well, thanks for everybody that's on tonight, and thank you for anybody that will watch the playback. I have a couple things on my heart that I wanted to share tonight. Um, one of them came from a networking group, a meeting that I was at last week, and the topic of conversation we talked about. And then another one <laughs> is because, so I recently started CrossFit again, and I started because I wasn't feeling my best with the routine that I was doing. I was trying to do everything on my own. I, I had gotten hurt, I needed knee surgery, so I started trying to work out on my own. And it became very frustrating, and it took twice as long, and I wasn't always sure what I was doing. I hope you can catch the parallels here. <laughs> and so I needed someone to tell me what to do. So my daughter has really found, she's 12, and she's found a real love for CrossFit. And I love that she loves it. She's a very strong young lady. Um, she's built more salad than my daughter, and she just really finds her place there. She feels confident there, and I want to feed that. And so I want her to stay with that. So I decided to join the gym that she's a part of, and because I was looking for something for me as well. So I've been, I'm in my first month doing it and I'm loving the community of people. I love how it makes me feel. And I love someone telling me what to do and coaching me and guiding me, right? Just like this business. Well, the CrossFit games just ended a couple days ago, if not yesterday. And my husband always has it on. It's always on in the gym when I go. And the winner of the CrossFit games is considered to be the fittest human being in the world. Now, the reason is they are using every part of their body. They are paddle boring, boarding without a paddle. They are lifting four times their body weight and walking. They were rowing on a row machine. They rode a marathon, a marathon. They get on a bike, they run. Like anything you can think of, they do that and it exhausts them. It exerts their body in a really, really big way. And Matt Frazier was the winner. And I right away thought to myself, he's won three years in a row. And I thought to myself right away, I'm like, why does he do it? <laughs> like, what's his why? I really wanted to know why he puts himself through that. So I just started Googling away. I wanted to know his story. And it turns out that two years prior to him earning and um, winning his first competition at the CrossFit Games, he had lost two years prior. He came in second two years in a row. And it made him really upset. And so he trained harder and smarter and worked harder. And now for three years in a row, he is considered the fittest human being in the world. Now, I wanted to read to you some of the things that I found about him, and then we'll go into that. Matt Frazier, you guys, is someone that probably could receive a lot of money by going and being at someone else's gym. So I want you to imagine, imagine the discipline it takes for him to compete at the level he does and win three championships in a row, right? On a, imagine the discipline he has to have on a daily basis. You would think that Matt would be in a gym, that he would have to go to a gym to gain that discipline. And that's not the case. He belongs to no CrossFit gym. He works out of his home. His gym is at his home. Granted, he goes to gyms now and again. So imagine the discipline it takes for him to get up in the morning and go to his own personal gym to work out and get ready for these games. He's got a really big why, right? He is dialed into exactly what he needs to do. And he has a very strict schedule when he does it. So his advice to other people, because the mentality and the mindset behind this too, he says, keeping positive influences in your life too. I try to live in my own little positivity bubble and to keep good people around me who encourage me and build me up instead of those negative friends that kind of chip away at you, especially on social media. If someone says something nasty that hits home with you, 
it can really just eat away at your day. And you begin to wonder, why am I listening to this person? Why am I letting them rent space in my head? He surrounds himself with people that lift him up and support him fully. Now, here's the thing with Matt. This is what he says. This is part of his why. He says, I know that I'm on a time clock and I want to take full advantage of what I'm capable of. So when I'm done, I won't look back and wonder, could I have done more? That's good. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I want to take full advantage of what I'm capable of so that I, when I'm done, I don't look back and wonder, could I have done more? Isn't that something we should all ask ourselves, right? Now, here's the thing with Matt. He has a schedule when he works out. So he gets up and he works out. It was like four hours. Okay, this is general. It's not verbatim from the article. And then he takes time off. He takes like two to three hours off. Then he goes back into the gym and it's two to three hours more. And then he's off for the night. Imagine what it would look like for Matt Frazier if he were just to fit in his workout here and there throughout the day. If he would say, well, I'm going to have breakfast, but I've got some free time here, so I'll go work out a little bit. Oh, well, now somebody called me, so I'll stop working out and then I'll get back to it later. Do you think that that would, do you think he could maintain his focus? if he kept up that kind of schedule? No way. <laughs> he would feel scattered and he would feel like he's all over the place. So that led me to, I wanted to talk to you guys tonight about time management. That was a discussion we had at my networking group on Thursday and really great conversations came from that because I just want you guys to think about how well you have control of your own time. And if you are saying to yourself, on a daily basis or tomorrow you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, I was just so busy. Like I didn't have any time. If you were to really log everything you did in that day, how busy were you really? And how much control of your time did you truly have? Because a lot of the times it's just a matter of we don't have our priorities in order, right? And when we have our priorities in alignment and then we give them the necessary time then that's when the magic happens because your priorities are in alignment. And for a long time, my priorities were so out of whack. I can't tell you guys how many times my family would say to me, how come when you're out with them or we see you at the meetings, like you're all so chipper and happy and you give so much. And then at home, we don't always see that. Right? <laughs> like that's not priorities how they should be they should be getting as much from us as we give when we're in front of the room and with other people, right? Or doing those one-on-ones. But you're not gonna recognize that if you're not fully in tune with the priorities that you should have in your life. And it is really hard sometimes if we don't have a schedule and work smart with our time. Because if we were to get, I know all of us on this Zoom right now, there's no, there, it's not necessary for us to work probably even four to five hours a day on this business. It's just not, it's, it's not needed. We probably don't have to give it that much time. We probably, if we focused every day or every other for some of us, an hour, an hour and a half on solid focused time on our list and inviting and the really money making activities that will produce significant outcomes to grow us, we could do those in a very short amount of time on a daily basis. But I think what we tend to do is we allow distractions to come in or we allow notifications on our phone to become urgent in that moment. And we think that if somebody's messaging us then we have to get back to them right away. And then we feel so sorry if we didn't get back to them right away, right? Like I'm, I'm speaking to myself too. And I just think that that can cause you to feel resentment as you grow this. And I don't want you guys feeling that resentment. I have had moments in my business growing this where when notifications are coming in one after the other, one after the other, I have felt resentment towards people. And that is on me because my priorities have not been in alignment because I'm feeling stressed out about those notifications in that moment and I get anxiety and I feel like I have to respond to them. And then I'm not present in this moment because I'm thinking so much about that. 
I just am giving you permission. I know I've, I've talked about this before. I just think it's important to talk about it again to let it go. If notifications stress you out, turn them off. <laughs> I turned off my Facebook notifications a very long time ago. And there are other things on my phone sometimes I think I need to turn those off too because they do. They can sometimes cause this feeling of resentment in me to where I know my priorities are not in alignment and I'm allowing those things that come in to take precedent over what I'm doing in the moment. And then I'm fully like not present in the moment at all with something that may be a complete priority for me when it comes to your husband, your children, maybe you're in prayer or you're journaling or you're in your personal development time and you have your phone by you and you see that notification and it takes you completely off course. And then by the end of the day, you, you realize, I didn't do what I set out to do. And you're resentful about it. You're regretful. And you don't like that you had that feeling. So I'm telling you this because I want you guys to know that you know your priorities in your life, that you have those non-negotiables, and that you give yourself and your business dedicated time because I promise you, you can get more done on this business in a short amount of time than you can in a long period of time in a day, right? If you have an employer and that employer gives you a deadline by the end of the day, are you going to work to get it done? Heck yeah, you are. You're going to be really smart with the time you have in that day to get it done because someone told you to do it. I want you to treat yourself that same way. Be that CEO that says, I have from nine to 11 today to do and make as many calls as I can to make as many new you know, um, connections on Facebook as I can. And then I'm going to turn it off and then I'll get back to it. I'll check my phone again, you know, at this time. And I know other things may come up, but we don't have to get to it right away. <laughs> Nothing is that urgent. It can wait. So if you set that precedence early on with your team, you guys, then they're going to respect that and they're going to know that okay on these days or during these hours or if tanya doesn't get back to me right away then i know she's got something important going on but i know she'll get back to me so just give yourself that um that it's okay to do that and here's one thing that was said too it said balance doesn't really exist but if you have priorities you should give them your focus don't allow the urgent to pull on you. Keep your priorities. And one thing too about with Matt is Matt Frazier, he knows exactly what he's doing the next day. So if he faltered in some area or didn't get something done with his training the day prior, he knows that that next day he has to make up for it and get it done. I really think you should be doing that same thing for your business. If you're tracking for Ireland right now, you should know exactly the activities, we talked about this our Super Saturday, the activities necessary to get done what you need to do to get those points in order. It's not just the points that come, it's the activity that's behind it. So have that book beside your bed, have a pen beside your bed, and before you go to bed every night, know with the surety what you are going to get done that very next day and when you're going to do it. Don't just have that to-do list and then no time that's set for it. Know the time in which you're going to do it so that you can really feel like you're giving your best. And the other real important thing with time, guys, is I want you to make sure you're giving time to yourself. Because I believe the more that we're feeding ourselves, the more time we're giving ourselves to do those things that really feed us and give us joy, the more your cup will be full and the more you'll have to give to others, right? So that means, this is so sad, but like for a long time, I felt guilty doing like hobbies or doing things that I loved because sometimes it's easy to assume that your upline, like they're always working. It just feels like they're always working. So when I'm not, I feel super guilty. And then I walk around and I'm like resentful, not resentful, but I'm jealous of these people I see walking around that just exude peace, like so much peace. And I'm like, where do they get that? I just want to have peace in my life <laughs> and I can have it. 
I just need to shut stuff off and give myself permission to enjoy my life while I'm building something beautiful. And I didn't do that for a very long time. And I still work on it. Like I don't have it figured out. I'm still working on it. But man, I'll tell you when I really shut it off and I know that I've given a hundred percent in the time that I have, and then I go and I work on my home or I paint something or I hang some pictures or I work in my yard. Oh my gosh, there's my piece. Like I feel so good and it brings me happiness. And then I have more to give when I get on these Zooms or when I go and talk to people and do those one-on-ones. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about, I know that on the call not long ago, well, like maybe probably before Carrie, the week before Carrie, I talked about the new video and the new PowerPoint. And I had said that, um, our upline was sticking to the ABC and their old PowerPoint. And then I was just going to stick to that until I heard otherwise. And I, um, I don't think I made a good decision. I've always done what our upline does, right? Um, our upline has been in the industry, the business for a very long time. So they all have established well oiled machines that are running really well right? But with the company coming out with this new video and this new PowerPoint, and as we all continue to want to grow in a really big way, it's really, really important that you guys don't have mixed signals, that you know exactly what to use and exactly where to go so that you can have duplication. Because if you don't know where to go and what to use and what to do, you're going to be confused and it's going to hold you back and then you're not going to know how to start your new person. And I don't want that for you. So I've been watching the new presentation. I watched Jeanette do it Saturday. She's been using it. I've watched Marcy and Dondi Nettles use it. I've watched um, Marisa Harrelson out of Arizona use it. And I love it. And it flows so nicely. And my intent, I can't this week because I'm going to a leadership conference on Thursday and Friday, but my intent is next week, I will be doing an opportunity presentation for you guys. I want to do it on Thursday night and I will use the new presentation. I want you to see it. Don't expect it to be perfect, right? No one I've seen ha has made it look perfect, but it's been perfectly imperfect to where you know that it's duplicatable and we can all figure it out, right? And we all know that this is what we're going to use. So I will be using the new PowerPoint. I want to support the company in their endeavors in creating that momentum that we want and having one system in knowing that your new distributor will see the same PowerPoint from us that they would see on the other side of the US because that's what we're choosing to do. I just think it's the right decision to not um, have us, you know, confused about what to use. So I will be doing that next week. And until then, I want you to know that there is a site called LV Webinar, www.LV Webinar. And if you go there, you will see Don D and Marcy Nettles do the presentation and they use the full PowerPoint. And it's a beautiful balance of their story the products and the business. And it's about, um, I want to say like 48 minutes long. So not horrible, but you know, Dondi being a chiropractor and then becoming a dad, not having any time. And now he's a stay at home dad, Marcy being a cop, getting hurt, trying to commit suicide four times, and then being introduced to this opportunity. They're very credible sources and their stories will hit hard with anybody. And they just do a great balance of doing that. So I would recommend that you watch that and use that as your third party validation when you're going to show someone life vantage. And then again, I am going to work hard to kind of get that down myself. And then I think over time, little by little, we should continue that for our team and put other people in the forefront, other people presenting. Maybe the, the week after someone does the products and I do the business, or I do the products and someone else does the business. And then we just kind of keep going through it so that you guys are comfortable doing it as well, so that the lingo becomes a part of you, so that when you're doing one-on-ones, you're just not questioning yourself, right? But we always want to use third-party validation, always, always. And I just think LV Webinar is a great source for that. So. Does anybody have 
questions on any of that, like the new PowerPoint, the new video. Um, Jeanette, would you mind telling us how it's been working for you? I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't tell her I was going to say this. You're fine. I won't unmute myself because I'm not looking so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can hear you. Um, it's been going great. I, I think what I love the most is it's, um, it's fast. So it's 30 minutes. So people aren't feeling like they have to stay on a long time. I think a lot of times we say our, our, uh, invitation is, Hey, can I take up 30 minutes of your time to show you something? And then we go 45, 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I love the ABC report. That's the only thing I changed in it. And, you know, I, I do love the product video that Life Manage came out with. I think it's amazing, but I just feel like the ABC report still tells the story for me. And so as I'm going through it, once I can, once I watch that ABC report and I continue through into the business, it just flows so nicely. So um, I'm not opposed to the other video. I think it's something that what I would end, um, end the meeting with is, you know, just simply, you know, um, we'll say, we could send you another video, you know, yada, yada, you know, whatever. I mean, there's something that, you know, it can be sent. Um, but I think I just like the flow of it. I like the fact that we're not going through and bombarding people with so much science that they're walking away glazed over wondering how they could ever do this business because how are they ever going to learn all that science? And I know for me, that was something that I thought in the beginning. So this just is an overview, a recap of the science and um, then you just move on from there. So, yeah. Thanks Jeanette. Yeah. I know Benny said that same thing too. He used it Saturday morning and he said that there were cliff notes on the bottom and he said those really kept him on in, in line too. Like when he felt like he got off track, those cliff notes really help set them straight. So I think that's a big deal too. Um, it is in a PDF version in your back office library. If you wanted to look at it, there's a long version and a short version. Um, I've seen it used both ways. Um, and I think both are, you know, equally amazing. The long version is going to talk more about the products, but at the same time, here's the thing with this PowerPoint is it really is all about how we set it up, right? It's all about how you set it up for the person. So if the person's going into the Zoom presentation and you know that they're very product focused, just let them know, hey, you're gonna see the products and you're gonna hear a little bit about the business. Take from it what you want, but I know that you said you're dealing with this. I really want you to pay attention to that video and I want you to pay attention to the science on the Nerf 2 that they'll talk about, right? And someone doing the presentation, I always say when I start it, like, I'll be sharing both with you tonight because I don't know your story personally. You'll hear about the products and the business and just keep in line, you know, listen to those things that will really resonate with what you're dealing with right now in your life. And afterwards, the person that invited you will answer all your questions accordingly. And that's the thing too, I think with these presentations is when we don't keep it very long, then we know that the right person that watches it will have the right questions afterwards so we can lead them accordingly. Because not everybody's gonna be interested in the presentation that we invite. We know that for sure, right? It just doesn't happen. <laughs> but the right person will have questions afterwards and then you can lead them in the right way. So anybody else? Okay, I'm gonna end with one more thing before we get off and that is um, Holly Freeman first started this for me and she invited me to Salt Lake City to a conference called Master Your Influence. It was like nothing I've ever, ever been a part of. And went to one, went to another, I told Vicki about it, Vicki went, and it changed Vicki's life. Like she took this conference, you know how we always say when you go to, to an elite academy, don't shelf what you've been given, like really change it and apply it in your life. And Vicki did that with this. And I just want to give her kudos because this last weekend, she took a whole group of people and she took people on our team that have been unplugged for quite some time that went and had an amazing time. So Vicki, would you just share just real, real quick, like some of the transformations that you saw 
in people's lives this last, last weekend because they did something that made them uncomfortable, because they went and tried to better themselves. I unmuted you. No, I didn't. Unmute yourself, Vicki. <laughs> okay. Am I on? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, well, the most exciting one to me was my 18-year-old daughter that I took. She's seen me go twice now, and she's wanted to go, but you have to be 18 to go, and she just turned 18 a couple weeks ago. Um, I have been trying to, the last two conferences that I went to, I've been trying to bring home to her what I've learned, but for her to see it herself, um, and then listen to her join in. There were seven of us in a minivan on this drive on the way back. And, and so we were having conversation about this and to hear her join in and give her two cents and to tell what she learned from it. Um, it does a mom's heart really good. <laughs> so, um, she, uh, just this morning, we were yesterday in the van, we were talking about how, um, like which, what your, what you set your intention is, is what will come toward you. Like your vibration will bring to you if your vibration is high it'll bring positive things if it's low it'll bring you know not so positive things so this morning she got up early and went to volleyball uh, practice and um i had texted some friends like three three words that i thought of them for the day and she was one of them and she texted me back and said you're never gonna believe the coach today talked about body language and positive self-talk <laughs> so, and I mean, she heard them talk about that before. So, um, and then she sent me a note. She said, it's going to be a great day. So um, just, um, and besides her, um, another one, I don't know um, who of you know Nikki. Um, I, I, I don't even know how to explain what I saw in her, but I saw like a determination in her. And I think her determination comes for wanting to better herself for her kids. She has four kids at home. Um, I saw something change in her and the really cool thing was she was also awarded a scholarship to like what the next class up is. Um, um, what was your biggest takeaway this time? Um, I, I, I really think what I got the most this time was the whole, um, like what you put out there is what you're going to step into. So if you put out their positive thoughts, if you, if you keep your thoughts positive, that's what's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. If you think, poor me, why me, that works for her, but it doesn't work for me, or excuse me, you know, why, um, I, I work with someone who's, who's um, always kind of like, you know, well, that's great for you, but it'll never work for me, you know, the kind of person who thinks only bad things come their way. And, um, I believe, I, I understand now, and I truly believe that it, it has a lot to do with how you think. Mm -hmm. you, you put out there, you put out to the universe, um, you set your intention. You, you set what you want to come back to you by the way you talk, the way you act, the things you do, the way you think, the things you listen to, um, the people you surround yourself with. You do that to yourself. You can't point to the world and say, um, why me, why me, why me? You have more control over your life and over your mind than you realize. Some people, some people understand this, but I didn't. I didn't. And the first time I went, that's what was most mind blowing. But this time around, um, it, it drove that home that um, you can control more than you realize about what comes back to you. Yeah. You guys, there was, um, and this is what I shared with Vicki the first time I told her, but I think this is something that's so important that we all take into any meeting that we, um, that we ever go into. I think it's easy to judge. And I know I've said before too, you know, going forward, like I just, I really wanna look for those motivated, driven, driven, successful people that really are busy and wanna get things done. But, you know, when I got into this, my signal was not very high, but my desire was. And so when I, when I told Vicki going into Master the, Your Influence last, the first time she went was this story of a teacher 
And this student goes in, like he really wants to meet with his teacher. He's met with all these other teachers and he feels like he's gotten everything he can, but there's this one teacher that he really wants to sit with that can feed him and make him the best that he can possibly be. So he's sitting with this teacher and as he starts talking to this teacher, he just starts talking and talking and talking about everything he knows and everything that he's learned and what he's been filled with. And the teacher slowly starts pouring him tea and he keeps pouring and pouring as the student keeps talking and talking and talking. And suddenly the tea overflows in the cup and the student's like, what are you doing? It's overflowing. Like that's enough. And the teacher says to him, Obviously, you've come in here and your cup is already full and you have nothing more that you can learn. I don't think that there, that we should be meeting, right? That's the essence of it. And it's really a story of like a, a kung fu master or something like that. So I told him, I'm like, go into this with an empty cup. Forget what you know. Forget what you think everything should be. Don't judge the speaker. Don't judge him against a speaker you've already seen. Just have an empty cup and take it for what you can. And I just think that's a beautiful thing that we should do every time we get on a Zoom or we hear an opportunity presentation or we go to meet with someone or we're meeting someone out and about and asking them questions like just never ever judge because people god puts people in our lives to teach us always and then for us to be able to give to them right um especially through this gift of life vantage so i i just wanted to end with that thanks for sharing vicky i'm so proud of you you're doing amazing things i'm going again next year to master your influence right when am i going <laughs> i don't remember may I'm going in May. Yeah. And then I get to go to Art of Mentoring in January with Vicki as well. And I'm really excited about that. So, okay, let's end in prayer, you guys, and then we'll um, call it a night. <sighs> Thank you, God. Thank you just that you're so good. Um, Thank you for these amazing people and just this amazing company that we know you have your hand on in such a big way. Um, I thank you, Lord, for all the gifts and talents that you've bestowed on everyone on here tonight, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that on a daily basis that we can align ourselves first and foremost with you, making you that priority that just helps us feel like our day is full and complete and beautiful. And even in the days that may be chaotic or the days where we seem so stretched or the days that are just really, really hard and beat us down, just help us to have perspective and help us to lean into you, to find that joy and know that it's all there for you to grow us. Um, help us to see the lessons as we go through this journey. Help us to see the lessons in the nose. Help us to have joy through the nose and to know that the right people are out there. Um, as long as we keep moving forward, as long as we don't stop and stay stagnant and wait, just help us to keep moving forward on a daily basis to feed ourselves, to feed our families, to just keep our priorities in alignment, Lord, so that in everything that we do, we have peace in our heart, joy in our heart, and we can just feed that and give that to everyone else that we come in contact with. Thank you again for all our beautiful gifts. Help us not to waste them, but to use them fully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Love you. Mwah. Have a great night. <clears throat>